Hi, it's Samantha. Welcome to another video from the comfort of my bed. I love doing these because then I get to sit in my bed, which is my favorite spot to sit. I think I'm going to try to do another one of the long videos where I don't edit anything and just post it because you guys, some of you liked it. I and if I don't have to do the work of editing a video, that makes it easier for me to post videos because then I don't have to edit them. Like, it just makes it all faster. So my daughter's napping right now and I'm just going to see how far we get until she wakes up, I guess. Because lots of updates. Um, I might break this up into two videos because I have multiple updates. But Happy New Year. Right now it's January 4th. And yeah, we're enjoying the new year so far. I'm feeling really good and I'll get to that in a minute. But first I want to talk about was, um, I think I mentioned in the last video, that's all I'm going to share right now. And everyone's like, well, why are you not sharing everything? And it's because I took a trip to one of the, I think it's like one of the top five cancer centers in the world, actually. It's at least top 10. Um, because I wanted to have a second opinion from one of those doctors, some other doctors that are here with me that currently work with me suggested I go and talk to them. Um, so that's what I did. And um, I just want to say that I did learn some things there and I'm very thankful for the opportunity to be able to go. Um, but I have never been more confident that this is the right place for me to be and that all the care that I've received has been the best possible care that there is for me, really. Um, so, I mean, haven't always followed everything straight by the book, but I have doctors here who really care about me and my wants and how I want to live my life and, you know, also treating the cancer and trying to get rid of it. <clears throat> so yeah, the reason I wasn't going to share that ahead of time was because I didn't want people to you know, find out where I was going and stuff like that, like privacy stuff. So that's why I waited until after to share it. Um, yeah, so I just will say that I did not have a good experience. Um, the doctor that I met was, I don't even know how to describe it. Um, but I will say that, you know, I've gotten comments from people over the years that have told me things that their doctors have said to them and they've told me stories. And I'm always like, how could this be real? Like, how could a doctor actually be this insensitive and say this sort of thing? And now I'm like, oh, yeah, makes sense. I've seen it happen now, so. I, 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 it makes sense that people have had that ex had those experiences before because I had an experience like that. And so basically I was at this appointment talking to this doctor, trying to get information from her, but also trying to hold back tears and keep my mind focused on the goal, which was to get information and to learn new things. And instead, I was trying hard, like, do you know when you just really don't like somebody and you want to discount everything they say because you really don't like them? So I was, but the, like, that's not fair, right? Because, you know, she's still a doctor and she's still, a doctor at one of these great places. So I still wanted to hear everything that she had to say, but she was just such, just a not good, great person. <laughs> it's just not that she wasn't a good person, it's just that she wasn't very good at 
having a conversation with cancer patients, which is weird because you'd think that they would be, but anyway. Um, yeah, so it was like, it was like I was trying to still listen to her and take everything she said seriously, even though I really, really didn't like her. And that was really hard. Um, there were a few parts in the conversation um, where she said a few things that, like, weren't true. Um, like, for example, well, not necessarily true. They could be true, but not necessarily. Like, for example, she asked about, like, the check 2 mutation that I have. And I had mentioned that, and she said, oh, um, do you have any family history of cancer? And I said, oh, I have one grandmother who had cancer. And she goes, oh, so that's where you got the, the mutation from. And I was just like, what do you mean? And she was just like, well, because if, if you had her, she, she was the one that gave you the mutation. And I was like, you have no idea if she's the one that gave me the mutation. There's like a one out of four chance that she gave me the mutation. I mean, I, I have four grandparents. It could have come from any of them. And she was just like, yeah, but probably from her. And I was just like, and she didn't stop and ask any other questions about her or any other questions about any other people in my family and any of the other types of cancers. And she just asserted that the mutation came from her, which I thought was just kind of I, I was just like, why? And so there were, there were a few things like that. And she was just kind of cocky, honestly. Uh, she acted like everything um, she said was the way to go. She really, really, really wanted me to remove my ovaries, which got me thinking, man, if I had gone to her right away and she told me to remove my ovaries, like right when I was first diagnosed, I might have done it. I might not have my daughter. And plus, the main reason why I haven't removed my ovaries, because I know it's a thing a lot of people do, but the main reason that I haven't was because my side effects were so bad on hormone therapy last time. And um, those same side, you can get those same side effects from removing your ovaries. So like you get put into a medical induced menopause by suppressing your ovaries and doing hormone therapy medications and stuff. And that causes tons of side effects. Or you can remove your ovaries and then you don't have to do the suppression. But that causes some of the same side effects. So I didn't want it. I don't ever, I mean, not ever, but I don't want to do that right now because I can't put them back. So if the side effects are so, so horrible and I decide, oh, I want to go back, I can't. I can't put my ovaries back in. So I tried to explain that to her and she just like kept pushing that I should have my ovaries out. And it was like she wasn't listening to me the entire time. Um, so, but you know, fair point. One thing that a lot of people do is take their ovaries out. And, you know, I'm able... I was able to listen to that suggestion and, and be like, yeah, that's, that's, that's something that some people do. I just don't want to do it. And it, but then she was kind of just like going through my medical history and criticizing things kind of, it felt like, um, and kind of had the attitude of, oh, well, if you had come here in the first place, this never would have happened. Like your cancer wouldn't have come back. And I just thought it was like a very cocky, weird attitude because she has absolutely no idea if my cancer would have come back and she has no idea why the cancer came back. She has, like, I mean, you can have a pretty good guess that, you know, since my cancer was uh, fed by estrogen that the pregnancy increased my estrogen a lot and, um, you know, made the cancer grow. And, and breastfeeding after the pregnancy. Um, so, like, probably, like, that's what, that's what happened. But she, <laughs> I, I, it's really hard for me to explain it. Like, the way that she was talking about things, just, it was like she was there and she saw the cancer replicating. And it was just, it was just, like, off-putting. It was not a fun conversation. She just, 
yeah, it was just very cocky, just saying things like, you should do this, you should do this, and she never said, like, it's my recommendation. She said, do this, do that. Um, yeah, so it was weird. Um, we discussed my current, uh, or, yeah, we discussed how I was going to do the chemo pill instead of going on hormone therapy. We discussed the trial that I was on. She had some remarks about how she didn't like trials. So I was like, okay. It's, it felt like a lot of the things that we kept talking about were in the past and it was like, I can't change these things. But she kept being like, oh, I don't like trials. Like, shouldn't have done that. And it was just like, it, <laughs> well, I have. So can we move on? Um, my oncologist here told me that they would probably tell us um, that I should be doing hormone therapy and not chemo pill. Um, she was very insistent on that. She thought that hormone therapy was way better than the chemo pill. She threw out some numbers that actually were not accurate because I looked them up and my oncologist here told me that they're not accurate and it, she was just trying to like inflate stats which was really weird <laughs> um and uh so she she was like she really wanted me to do hormone therapy and I expected that I expected to hear that when I went there because that's the normal course of action is that people do hormone therapy um and she just kept saying stuff like, well, most people don't like to do chemo because it's so toxic. And I kept saying, yeah, that should tell you, that should tell you how bad hormone therapy was for me because I do want to do chemo because I'd rather do chemo than this hormone therapy. So through all of that, you know, me sitting there and, you know, my husband and my mom were also in the room and they were listening to this and trying to talk she kept she kept talking over me too like she would ask me a question and then I wouldn't be able to finish it and she would ask if I had questions I would start to ask a question and she would say the same thing over and over again instead of really listening to what I was saying so really I just kind of felt like I wasn't being listened to but whatever um out of all of that there were two things that she said that I took away that were actually good points I think um because the other points like didn't matter it was all like oh you should do this and you should have done that and stuff that doesn't matter um so two things she said were good and one of them was oh, okay why, why can't i think of it right now <laughs> the first thing that she said was that chemo can mutate the cancer more than hormone therapy would so going on a chemo pill or trying to do chemo instead of hormone therapy could make your cancer mutate and um, make it make it um, more resistant to treatment. And um, so that's not good to start with chemo. Like that's why you shouldn't start with chemo. Um, and then the other thing that she said was that the chemo pill that I was gonna do or it, yeah spoiler alert changed changed what I'm doing um, the chemo pill will work for a certain amount of time and then stop working so if you use it now you can't use it later it's not gonna work twice so I can't do the chemo pill go on hormone therapy and try the chemo pill again that's just not gonna work so that made me and um, my husband and my mom and other people start thinking that it might be bad, best to do hormone therapy first and then chemo, the chemo pill, because I still have the chemo pill in my back pocket. Like maybe, maybe don't ever use it again. But like since I was only take, I'd only taken it for a week, it would still be fine to stop like the cancer wouldn't have recognized it at that point and it would probably still work again so by doing hormone therapy first you still have that option later on and if you do the chemo first then it takes away that option and you don't have that option because basically right now 
Um, I'm just kind of going to be doing treatments until I don't do treatments anymore. So it's like do treatments until and see how much they work. And then when one stops working, then go into a different treatment. So you want to have as many options open as possible. And so that was a good point, I thought. And then the mutation thing was a good point. So that got me thinking a lot about switching to doing hormone therapy. And I still not super happy about it because I hated hormone therapy and I hated being on it. Um, but I thought that, you know, things can change. And maybe I wouldn't have as bad of a reaction to it this time around. So, you know, I've, I, my body's gone through stuff. I'm older now. Um, hormone therapy is a lot harder on younger people, which is why it was so hard on me because I was 22, 23, just taking away all of my estrogen. And, you know, I'm 27 now, so it's not like I'm old and it's going to be a million times better. But, you know, I'm older, so maybe it'll be better. I've gone through a pregnancy that can change your body and how you react. So... My thought process is now, why don't we just try it? Why don't we try it and see? I can try a different type of hormone therapy than I was on last time. There's lots of different options. And, you know, if it's so unbearable and I get depressed and everything's awful like it was last time, then I can go off of it. So that's kind of my thought process now. And we have that other chemo pill that I was doing like as as a, an option later down the road if we need it and yeah so those are the things that I took away from that appointment um, probably I'll make another video explaining more in detail what my new treatment is going to be um, because we did change everything around again, which is also annoying because it, it feels like we don't, I mean, we have a plan, but it feels like things just keep changing and I'm just waiting to, to do something and I'm just waiting to see a scan to see if it'll work. Um, yeah, because I obviously don't know what's going on in my body until I get a scan, so just kind of waiting around for that and yeah so I just wanted to share that experience um, just because you go to a top whatever cancer center in the world doesn't mean that you're gonna find some amazing doctor and just because you go to you know your local cancer center doesn't mean you're not getting top-of-the-line care that is like personalized for you and the things that you are looking for in your cancer care keep thinking about how many people must go there that are really young and she tells them to just take rip their ovaries out like immediately and how sad that must be for those people that can't put them back um, for whatever reason I mean if they don't have stage 4 cancer they could get pregnant later in life um, it, like it would be a high likelihood of that and otherwise they could have, like if they had horrible side effects, they could have like reversed them, but not if they take the ovaries out. And so, I don't know, I just think about that doctor and think about all the people that she's been treating and she's probably helped so many people and she's gotten some good results. But I just think it's, I just think about like, what if I had gone there first and what if I had gotten that result? like that advice first and I'm just so thankful that I am where I am and was where I was and got the treatment that I got and of all the things that have happened so far I think that they're right and they were meant to happen so yeah that's basically I think all I'm going to say in this video because like I said, um, to, to go more in depth on my treatment, it'll be longer. So hope you enjoyed. Um, subscribe if you want to follow along with my journey. And 
yeah, that's all. Bye. Leave questions if you want. That's all. Bye.